what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today I am super excited because uh, we finally got a new single board computer that can definitely rival the Pi in fact it's three times more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4 and you know when I mention single board computer first thing that probably comes to a lot of people's mind is the Raspberry Pi but what we have here is a newcomer to the market known as the Indie Droid Nova, and this is coming to us from Ameridroid. If you're familiar with Ameridroid, you know they've been in the uh, single board computer scene for quite some time. But don't let the fresh face fool you, because already, right out of the box, we've got a lot of different distros that we can use on this board. It's actually pretty impressive what they've done so far. Now, before we go any further, I do want to mention that the unit I have in my possession is a pre-production unit. So you'll see we've got a cutout for a fan in that heatsink. The retail version doesn't have that cutout in the heatsink for that fan to kind of sink down inside of, but it does come with a heatsink and a removable 32GB eMMC module. We can also run this from a micro SD card. And I'll give you a look here over on the Indie Droid Nova official website. You can see we don't get that cut out here. And the GPIO pins are actually color coded instead of just kind of solid yellow there. So personally, I do think it looks a little better. They've got their official website up, Indie Droid Nova. I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, the first thing I wanted to take a look at was just their download section. Because as we know, with newer single board computers, software is a bit lacking. But right now, just scrolling down the list here, you can see that a lot of people are working on some great stuff for this little board. Kali Linux, Ubuntu, Arch, we've got Android. There are some retro gaming operating systems available right now for it. So yeah, I mean, we've got software support right out of the box. And of course, I wanted to give you a quick size comparison with the Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see, I mean, we're working with the same form factor here. But the Nova is three times more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4. And we've actually got a little more I.O. On the bottom, as you can see, this has an eMMC module. This is a removable module, and the base unit actually comes with a 32 gigabyte module to get you up and running. But again, if you wanted to run from a micro SD, you could always do that. Taking a quick look at the I.O., we've got two USB 2.0 ports and two USB 3.0 ports, plus gigabit Ethernet. Over here on this side, we've got our Type-C DCN. This is 5 volts, 3 amps to get you powered up micro HDMI, and Type-C, which actually works as a display port. There's also a CSI connector, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and an RTC battery connector. It also has 40 GPIO pins, a DSI connector, and four physical buttons, boot, reset, power, and recovery. And of course, on the bottom here, we've got a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth chip, an eMMC slot, and a micro SD card slot. And when it comes to the specs, for the CPU, we've got the Rockchip RK3588S. This is an 8-core ARM SoC. We've got four A76 cores at 2.4 GHz and four A55 cores at 1.8. One of the best things about this SoC is actually the GPU. We've got the Mali G610 MP4. And with newer updates to Linux drivers here, be it Panfrost, we're seeing some amazing performance out of this GPU. And just like a lot of other single board computers on the market, they are offering a few different RAM variants, 4, 8, and 16 right now, but all of them do come with that swappable 32 gigabyte eMMC module, plus we get that full heatsink without the cutout for the fan, but they also include a fan just in case you want to keep it a little cooler. You can just mount it right to the top of that heatsink. This does have dual band 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 built in. And we did take a look at their official website just to take a look at the different distros. We can install Android or Linux. And uh, when it comes to Linux, we've got Arch, Ubuntu. There's a few different standalone emulation operating systems ready to go for this. But out of the box on that 32 gigabyte eMMC module, which comes included, you're going to get Android 12. We're going to take a look at that right now. So obviously, this is going to make it easier on a lot of people just to have that operating system ready to go. And uh, at that, it's a very easy to use operating system. Most of you probably already know exactly what to do here. It's Android 12. And I'll tell you, Linux is great on this chip. But when it comes to gaming and emulation, you really can't beat Android right now the way it is with all of the drivers and optimizations. And we do have some dedicated settings here. So uh, HDMI is one of them. We've got that micro HDMI port. We can adjust the resolution and screen zoom from that. Or if you want to do that display port, which just happens to be the other USB Type-C port, we can adjust it as long as it's plugged in. As you can see, it's grayed out right now. It is Android 12. It's not an older operating system, kind of masquerading as a newer one. And uh, yeah, it's a very snappy system here. Here's a 4K60 demo that I usually like to test here. And when it comes to the Arcade 3588S, 
From the Rockchip video player, this will do 8K video playback quite well, but I don't have an 8K monitor. And most people aren't going to be doing 8K, you know, from, let's say, an external drive or even internal media. Most people are going to want to stream from their favorite apps. And as you can see, with YouTube, you're going to get some super smooth playback. I mean, this is great, and I expected it to be. I mean, this thing is running at full speed. We've got uh, proper drivers here on the GPU side of thing with Android and even Linux. We've got Panfrost with some of the newer Linux builds for this board, which do up the performance on the GPU side of things by quite a bit. And just to give you an idea here, I did run some benchmarks with uh, this version of Android 12. And first up, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a uh, GPU benchmark. It tests the Vulkan performance. 4,463. Looking great here, and it's right on par with other 3588 systems that I've tested. Next up, we've got uh, Antutu. And this is looking phenomenal for a single board computer. 489,736. And if you take a look down the list here, Right on that GPU, 175,998. So when it comes to these ARM-based boards, it's putting out some great performance. And uh, I wanted to get into some gaming. We're going to test out some native Android gaming and especially emulation because this chip has enough power to do GameCube, PS2, and even Switch emulation with some easier to emulate Switch games using the Skyline emulator. But the first thing I wanted to start with was some native Android gaming. And we're starting off light here with Minecraft, 12 chunks, fancy graphics is on. I didn't have to lower any of the settings. Very playable experience here, and I kind of expected it to be. I mean, this is a very well optimized game. Uh, taking the chunks down on lower end systems allows you to play this on basically anything. So let's take it up just a bit here. This is a newer one, and I kind of wanted to just run this to get some people's thoughts on this. I'm a huge Street Fighter fan, but I'm not sure how I feel about this game. It's kind of one of those uh, tap-to-fight games. It's not Street Fighter if you ask me, but uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Either way, it does run well on this board. Car X Drift. This is one that I play a lot on my Android device, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in here. We're at 60 FPS, medium settings, and it does look really good. I mean, I could play this all day long. And we've got Bluetooth, so I do have an Xbox controller connected. I don't have to use, you know, a mouse or anything like that to play this game. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and first up, we've got some PSP. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan backend, 2x resolution, Chains of Olympus, running at full speed. We really don't have to worry about PSP emulation on these boards anymore, as long as we've got that RK3588 or higher. Really great performance. Next on the list, we've got some GameCube emulation, and I will tell you, it's not going to run every single GameCube game. Here's a harder one that I usually love to run. This is Auto Modal East, and it's doing a lot better than I thought it would. We're at the native resolution, using the Vulcan back end, and you will see some dips under 60, but I'd say, yeah, I mean, this is playable on this single board computer. If you wanted to do the easier to emulate stuff, Time Splitters, Sunshine, Wind Waker, it's going to run at full speed on this thing. I also wanted to show off some PS2 emulation. We're using Ether SX2, 1X resolution, OpenGL backend. Going up any from here does give us some major FPS dips, but we're able to play even God of War 2 right here at 1X resolution. Linux variants, and I will have a dedicated video because there's so much to go over here. And I've just flashed this to a new EMMC module. It's a modified ARMBN image with uh, the GNOME desktop, and this is from Tech Toy Tinker. We've got the newer Panfrost blob here for the GPU, so we're getting some great GPU performance. And this is one of those boards that could definitely be used as your everyday desktop with the correct operating system installed. And I wanted to bring this to your attention. The board that I've been using through this whole video is the 4 gigabyte model. So we've only got 4 gigs of RAM, and uh, we're getting great performance. You can go with the 8 or the 16 if you want to, but 4 seems really good, especially just for Android. With a heavier desktop operating system and the fact that some people just like having a ton of apps open, the 8 gigabyte might make a lot more sense. But yeah, I mean, these boards are definitely a lot more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4. They are coming in a bit more expensive, you know, at the retail price. But taking a look at Raspberry Pi 4 prices right now on eBay and even Amazon, people are scalping them, and they're going for even more than this thing is. But you got to remember, with this, we also get 32 gigabytes of storage right out of the box and an awesome cooling solution. So yeah, I do think that this is worth it, and it's just putting out a lot more performance on the CPU and especially GPU side of things when you compare it to the Raspberry Pi's Broadcom CPU. 
Now, the Raspberry Pi does have that community, but this is built up really fast, and as long as more people can get their hands on this, we're going to see some awesome stuff come to the Indie Droid Nova. Definitely want to do a dedicated Linux video, so let me know what you want to see running in the comments below. We've got a lot that we can test here, and if you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave some links in the description. You can head over to Ameridroid's website, and I'll also leave the IndieDroid.us website in the description below. You can check out the operating systems that are available for download right now. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about the performance, overall design, and you know, if you've got any questions about it, just let us know. And if you're interested in seeing more, it'd be pretty cool if you could hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on. But like always, thanks for watching.